In this lesson, we'll continue our review of reading test eight, section one. It's the fifth and final passage. It's our second science. There will always be two science passages on the reading section. This passage is adapted from Daniel Chamowitz, What a Plant Knows, a Field Guide to the Census, published in 2012. I assume you read this. I will read the first few sentences. It's always good to have an idea what the theme of this, this passage is about and then answer the questions. Again, if you're not certain about the main theme, skip those questions, answer the specific questions first. The Venus flytrap, Dianea muscipula, needs to know what ideal mate is crawling across its leaves. Closing the trap requires a huge expense of energy and reopening the trap can take several hours, so Dianea only wants to spring close when it's sure that the dawdling insect visiting its surface is large enough to be worth its time. The black hairs on their lobes allow the Venus flytraps to literally feel their prey and they act as triggers that spring the trap closed when the proper prey makes its way across the trap. If the insect touches just one hair, the trap will not spring shut, but if it's large enough bug, will likely touch two hairs within about 20 seconds. That signals spring the Venus flytrap into action. So this is really explaining that the mechanism when the Venus flytrap closes, it doesn't just do it indiscriminately because it takes so much energy and so it wants to make sure that the prey is large enough and there's this, this mechanism where it has to touch two hairs in 20 seconds and that's the only way it will close shut to trap the prey. And the rest of the passage kind of explain ex exactly how this mechanism was created, like what was the means, and uh, let's take a look at the questions. And so the first one, again, this is a general question. If you're not certain, you may want to skip this. You'll get a much better understanding of the whole passage after identifying specific questions and referring back to the passage. We're just going to do these in order, but just keep this technique in mind. The primary purpose of the passage, remember they always use kind of broad language here. Let's take a look at A. It to discuss the findings that offer a scientific explanation for the Venus flytrap's closing action. You know, this actually is the answer here, and you may not have known this right away, but it explains in the very beginning how it closes it, right? It has to be a large enough bug, but the rest of the passage really, it offers the explanation. There was two experiments done measuring electrical current. It's explaining how it's closing. And if you look at the other choices, You'll see these aren't accurate, present research that suggests that the Venus flytrap's predatory behavior is both complex and unique among plants. Again, this is not what the whole passage is about, and we don't have any evidence that it's unique among plants. I mean, you might infer that, but it's not given in the passage. Identify the process by which the Venus flytrap's closing action has evolved. Again, there's no discussion of the evolution. Provide a brief overview of the flytrap and its predatory behavior. No, it's a much more specific passage about how exactly it closed and scientific evidence based on experiments as to how that was done. So the answer is A. 43. Based on the passage, a significant advantage of Venus flytrap's requirement for multiple triggers is what? And you can kind of predict this. We know that it doesn't do it indiscriminately. And what's the advantage? We know it's between 3 and 18. It's a pretty short range. That was in that first paragraph that I read. So let's just take a look between 3 and 18, an advantage of closing the trap. So if we start right at 3, closing its trap requires a huge expense of energy and reopening the trap can take several hours. So Diane Nea only wants to close when it's sure that the dawdling insect visiting the surface is large enough to be worth its time. Right away we see it's, this is an advantage. It takes such energy, and so it wants to make sure the prey is large enough. And so this looks to be the evidence right away. And again, we could probably predict it just from reading that first paragraph, just understanding the passage. And so if we think the evidence is 44 is A, right? It's a huge expense of energy to close the trap. What's the advantage? Enables the plant to identify the species of its prey. We don't know what the prey is. The, the fly trap just knows the size, right? conserves the plant's calcium reserves. And is that the advantage? It's, to, it's pr conserving the reserves? Again, that's not really accurate. In that first line we read that, um, let's just go back to three through six. It just says a huge expense of energy. It doesn't say anything about the calcium reserves, even though that was mentioned, I think, in a different part of the passage. 
safeguards the planet's energy supply. This is the answer, right? This is the advantage. It doesn't just do it indiscriminately. It wants to conserve energy. So the advantage is it safeguards the plant's energy supply. All right, let's take a look at 45. The use of the phrase is dawdling insect in line six and happily meanders in 27 and unassuming bugs encounter in the first two paragraphs establishes a tone that is what? So this is just establishing what's the tone. And you can see this is sort of a, um, kind of a casual, I mean, even though it's a scientific article, right? Dawdling insect and happily meanders. It's almost kind of a, like a common like vernacular, right? It's just sort of casual. And we can just look, I mean, we can go back and look at these, but I think if you just remember from reading these and just seeing these dawdling insect in a scientific passage and happily meanders, this is not academic melodramatic this is this is not a, an ironic or, or melodramatic there's this that that's not the tone remember this is an academic passage it's certainly not mocking right it, it mocking it's just casual it's just informal and i don't think that was too difficult it is c and let's do one more question number 46 in the second paragraph 15 to 31 the discussion of short-term memory primarily functions to what? Again, this is a function question. What's the function of 15 to 31? So let's take a look at that paragraph and try to predict the function before we look at the choices. So this is after the first paragraph that explained how it, it, it needs those two triggers, those um, two touches within about 20 seconds that signals the Venus flytrap into action. So here's the beginning of the second paragraph. We can look at this system as analogous to short-term memory. First, the flytrap encodes the information. It forms the memory that sometimes it doesn't know what has touched one of its two hairs, and it stores these information for a number of seconds, retains the memory, and finally retrieves this information, recalls the memory once a second hair is touched. And so this is sort of explaining exactly how that's done. We have an example, a small ant. It, it uh, might have brushed up against the next hair. It's too small and so it doesn't close. But if the plant encodes and stores information from an assuming bugs encounter from the first hair, it's, it's really explaining like, how does it remember the first touch on the second? And so this example just helps sort of explain it. We also had analogous, which means it's giving an analogy of this system. It's like short-term memory and the retrieval process. And so let's look at the answers here. What's the function of this? And clarify an explanation of what prompts the Venus flytrap to close. This looks good. Remember, we had an analogy. We had an ex explanation. It gives more detail. It explains what exactly prompts it to close. Remember, there's two triggers within 20 seconds, and it explains it. And so if you look at the other choices, it's certainly not a controversial hypothesis. We don't have any information based on that. Stress the distinction between the strategies of Venus flytrap and the strategies of human beings. Even though there was an analogy, there was nothing about the distinction. Again, this is just off point. Emphasize the Venus flytrap's capacity for retaining detailed information about its prey. Does it emphasize the capacity? Again, no, it just gives an explanation. And that's part of the analogy and also the explanation with the ant. So the answer is A.